So now that we have added pagination to our items, let's go ahead and see how we can add unit tests to our API views. Now adding unit tests to your code is really important because it confirms to you that the code you wrote really works the way you expected it to work. And most importantly, it enables you to spot some unintended behavior and that helps you catch bugs earlier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add tests to make sure that we can create to-dos and also we can retrieve to-dos. So we're gonna go to the test.py file. Now, when you create an app, this file is created for you automatically. So what we want is, is we want to first import test case from REST framework because that is the class that enables us to test our API views. So we're gonna do REST framework test import. We want to import API test case, test case. Okay, then here let's have our class to test our list and create API views. So test list create. Then we inherit from API test case. Make sure we call it to do's. Over here, let's now create a test that will check that we are able to create a to do. So over here, I'm gonna have test create to do it's in self since we are in a class. So every time we inherit from API test case, we get access to a client. So you can think of a client as postman or car that we can use in our tests. So we can access that by doing self with client. And notice that now we can set cookies on it. We can call post on it. We can call get on it. So what we want here is we want to post to the to an endpoint. Now our endpoint to create a to-do is called, if we go to our URLs, you will see that it's called to-dos. Here, we want to make a post request to this. And when we are retrieving, we make a get request to this. So here I'm gonna import reverse so we can get the endpoint by its name. So from rest from Django URLs, import reverse. Then here we can now say reverse. Then we want to do like this. When we are making a post request, we need to send the data. So on the second parameter, we can specify the data. Now we are gonna create a dictionary here for our sample to do. So I'm just gonna say sample to do. Then it's gonna be a dictionary with the title. I'm gonna have hello. Let's have the desk. Let's have this. So now we have our sample to do that we can use to create. So we can pass it as the second argument here. And then, Whenever we make a request, it returns for us a response. So we can have response equals this. So at this point, you can imagine what will happen because we are just making a request. We expect it to create or fail. But if you, if you think of it properly, you know that our API requires us to first authenticate a user so it can create. So we really expect this to return a 401 and fail because we have not authenticated. So here we can have something like self dot assert equal. Let's check that the status code is a failure and that we didn't authenticate. So we can say response dot status code. This should be a 401. So I'm gonna import status from REST framework. So from REST framework, import status. So now that we import status, we can go ahead and now say we expect this to be a 401. So that's gonna be unauthorized. Okay, so now, if we go ahead and run this test, so I'm gonna stop the server and run the test by running python manage.py test. We expect it to fail, let's make sure it's python. And we get the failure. So let's check what's going on here. So I'm gonna do this. Oh, it's actually a 403, not a 401. So let's make sure this is a 403 forbidden. Okay, so let's try again. Because that now this passes, but this doesn't actually create create our to do. So we need a way to authenticate the user before we try to create a to do. I'm gonna modify this test name to make sure that it represents what the test is doing. So I'm gonna say test test should not create to do with no user with no authentication with no. Auth I'm gonna say no auth like this. So basically now we have a test that that checks that whenever a user has not logged in, they are not able to create a to do. Now for us to be able to log in here, whenever we have a client like Postman, we have to go in our auth and we go, we choose bear a token and then we can add a token. So we need to do something similar in our tests. So I'm gonna have a, a helper here called authenticate user. I'm gonna say def authenticate, authenticate. And what we'll do here is we actually are gonna be making a request to that register endpoint to the login endpoint so that we get the token and we attach it to our client that is in the API test case. So what we're gonna do is 
Here, we basically are going to make a request to the register so self dot client dot post. So let's reverse. I believe we called it register. We can check. Then we need to, to send a user. So we need to send the username. Just gonna have a username in there. The email, then the password, set password. Let's make sure everything is formatted properly. So this is gonna go ahead and register a user. Now we need to log in this user. Remember when we are logging, let's, change, let's make sure the email is valid so it doesn't fail to so gmail.com. We're gonna make the same request to the, to the login. So I will, I will keep the response to the login in the response because we are going to need to pick the token from the response. So that's gonna be served at client post reverse login. Then we need to send the email and password that we just created this user with. So it's gonna be email then password like this. So expect this to bring us the token. So whenever you make a request to a server and get back data. That's that data is in the request in the response dot data. So we expect our token to be in in there in there. So what we want is we want to set this as the authorization to our test client. So how do we do that? So what we want to do is we want to do self dot client. Then we call credentials. So when you call credentials, you need you need now to pass in the credentials basically. So we want to pass in the HTTP underscore authorization. Okay, so the value for this, so then we set this to the value. Now we want it to have bearer since that's the scheme, then space, and then we can now go ahead to add our, we can now go ahead to add our token. So here we can have the token. So the token is this basically. So it's going to be this. So let's make sure we need to use double quotes here. All right, show you one and save. So this is going to go ahead and now add our header to our client. So that means that now we can have a test that should create this. We can now have a test that should create a to do, but first we need to authenticate a client. So we can now test should create to do like this. So what we want to do first is we want to authenticate a user. So authenticate. Okay. So when we authenticate, now we can do this, but now we expect it to give us a 201. So HTTP 201. So let's go ahead and run this test again. You can see that now they all pass. So even this, since we authenticate, it passes. If we change this, we should it should fail because it will not create because the user is not, is not going to be there. And you see it fails. So let's undo that and we run again. And so now we are on. So what you always want to do when you make tests like this, you want to have different scenarios that you're checking for. For example, here, yes, we are checking the status code, but we want to check that, we want to check things like, if we made, if we're able to send the title, is it the title that the server sent back to us? Also, you want to make sure that if you created through the API, the API view, did the database receive an update, those kinds of things. So let's first check if that, if that was saved in a DB. So I'm gonna have a variable here called previous to do count. Then we'll set that one to to do's, to do dot objects dot all. Let's call count on it. We need to import to do. So from to do's models import to do. Okay. So we have the, the previous count. So after we make the request, now we can check if this count increased. Okay, so we can have that assertion too. So we can have self dot assert equal. So we're gonna make another query. So to do dot objects dot count. Then we're gonna have prev count. We want to check if it was incremented by one because when we create the database should update. So let's rerun back. This should pass. It actually fails. The import this should be to do's okay let's rerun and you can see that now they pass so let's also go ahead and add an assertion that the title we sent and the description we sent were the ones that were sent back to the client so we can do self at such equal results dot data so it's going to be response data then we want to check for the title because we expect it then we want to make sure that it is equal to hello so make sure you have hello in there then let's check for the disk. Make sure it is tests. 
okay you can also add any kind of assertion you want just be sure that you've tested all the cases that you would want your api to always respond to and now if we run this you can say things are still fine so since we are testing both creation and also the retrieving let's go ahead and also add a test that can retrieve all items so over here we can have a test retrieves all to do's so over here what we want is of course to make a request and you know we can use the client so i'm gonna copy the same thing here and bring it down here and now you know we have to make the get request so we want to do get here get doesn't take the body so we can remove the second parameter and you know we also want to first authenticate so we can as well first authenticate so self to authenticate otherwise we will get an error so now that we have the response we can check that the response return is 200 because even when the the api hasn't had any creations of to do's it should still send us 200 and, and it should still send us the empty list so let's first add those assertions so self to assert let's check response status code should be 200 so status 200 okay let's also make sure that we have the results so we can have self.assert is instance so we want response dot data results and it should be an instance of the list make sure we tap this one in so let's run back again they should be 11 and they should all pass and you can see that now they are all passing so that's good if we want to check that whenever we create we get the pagination links you can also add that so i'm gonna go here and copy this and obviously you could write this one better but i'm just showing you basically what's in what this thing will consist of so let's make another post request and at this point when we make a get request we should expect it to have pagination links like the next or the current count so let's make another another request so i'm gonna say the response here and now we will expect it to have the the count so i'm gonna have his instance here and the count should be an integer and of course it should equal one so let's have count there the type should be int okay let's also check that it's one so we can now check assert equal count should be one yeah okay so let's do this over here to use the new one so rest equals that and that's the only one i check here make sure that it got updated whenever when we created and when we make another request we have the update so let's run back again and you can see that they pass but you can go ahead and check every anything you want to check here this is just an example of how to approach it so i hope this gave you a good insight on how to approach testing and yeah i'll talk to you guys next time